Yo, what is up YouTube and today I'm going to be doing a small kind of video for you is basically I've been asked quite a lot of times what kind of software uh, packages do I use to create my YouTube videos. Now whether you're going to be making content for YouTube or if it's just a personal video, um, I would suggest using uh, programs other than After Effects but if you are very persistent on using After Effects or if you already have the program then maybe it's best to know some of the basic tips if you're struggling. Um, I will say now, After Effects is what it is on says it is on the tin. It's After Effects. It's post production um, videos that you already have. Say, for instance, you've recorded on a video on your iPhone. You want to add a nice uh, color correction on the video. After Effects is great at doing that. It can also add many other kind of effects with third party plugins. But that's way, way, way into the future of what you're going to want to be doing. Um, First off, you're going to want to be learning the basics. So I'm going to try to go ahead and make a couple of scenes and try to explain the process as we go through it. This could easily go up to maybe 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. I think it could go up to an hour if I try to explain everything. So I'm going to try and do everything relatively fast, but try to be as clear and concise as possible. It's going to be quite hard. I'm not that good at explaining things, but I, I know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start with this tutorial. Okay, so first thing is we want to import footage. We can't make a, a video file without video footage. So there's quite a few ways to import some footage. They can go for the classic file import file. Or we can right click in this. This is a, a project window. Now all your assets for the video is going to be kept in here. Whether it be a, a video file, an audio file, music file, pictures. You name it, it can be kept in here and it will be kept in here. So if we right click and go to import file, we can bring in any video footage, just like any other program. Um, you can also drag in your footage as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and drag in Tough Cops versus Rubbers. Got a quite a nice little scene in here, quite a nice little dodge. Quite a tough little game, so yeah, not bad. I haven't used this for anything else, so you know, first time that you've seen it. Nothing really fancy to be honest anyway. So as you can see, I was moving the windows to kind of just align a appropriate uh, appropriate position for every window that's comfortable for my working standards. Um, depending on what uh, version of After Effects you're using, I'm using CS 5.5. You can go to Templates, uh, sorry, not Templates, Preferences, and Appearance. You can change the color and lightness of the background and the user interface, which may be easier for some people if you're having problems seeing stuff and such. By default, I think it's gray. Yes, but I like it black. Why not? Easy to see. I work in the dark. Too bright. Does my eyes in. Anyway, let's get started. So, first things first, most people will need to know how to create a composition. A composition is basically a box that holds all the contents of your video footage. You cannot make a video file without a composition. A composition holds the following and uh, most important attributes of the video file. I'm gonna show you some of the attributes right now. Um, in your project window over here, highlighting one of the video uh, files that you have or whatever it is, it will give you a brief description of the uh, properties for such video. Say for instance, this video is 1280 by 720. Uh, it shows the length and duration of the video along with the frames per second, 29.9, uh, 29.97 frames per second, millions of colors. This shows the video encoding, which is uh, QuickTime H264. Uh, also shows the audio encoding, which is 48 kilohertz, 32 bit, and stereo sound. So let's go ahead and just drag our footage down here. Now this will create a new composition using those previous attributes I just read out. So if we were to right click down here in this composition window, we can go to composition settings, and we can see the settings that I just read out. It will try to allocate all of the settings of the video file into a composition for you to then just start working from. Very quick and easy and uh, yeah it's definitely uh, the way that I try to work. You can change your background color to anything else and uh, we will be covering that a little bit later. Just for example I'm going to be changing this to red okay just remember it's the background is red okay it's actually more like a little light salmon. I just put that right into red there we go click OK and now we have a composition now your composition uh, video can uh, be seen over here 
We can change the quality when we're working from full to quarter. Now this is only for working purposes. So say for instance you're working on a very complicated screen or video, there's a lot of effects going on, it's uh, slowing down the computer, it's very taxing on your um, graphics card and whatnot. You can change the uh, working um, visual whatnot to quarter and that will help. Um, I'm going to work in full just because it's easier for me. You can change all these different bits down here. Just have a little play about but I wouldn't worry about it for now. Uh, quite a lot on the screen. I wouldn't worry about anything on the right hand side for the time being. Okay. Um, your set out might be different if you're working with CS 5.5. Just make sure your workspace is set to standard. Okay. Okay, using the roller mouse ball, if you've got a, ro a mouse with a roller ball, you can zoom in and out. Very quite nice. Otherwise, you can change here. I'm going to go ahead and set to 100%. Actually, no, I'm not. That's horrible. Let's go to fit to 100%. There we go. Fits quite nicely and scales with the window. Okay, let's get started. First off, I'm going to... Uh, I just double-clicked the footage down here, and basically it op opens up the original footage... Um, but we don't need that, so I apologize. Let's just go ahead and close that. <laughs> I'm confusing you already. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select this layer once. We're going to click it once, like we just have, so it's highlighted. I'm going to press Enter. Now we can press Return on the keyboard, and we can start typing in a layer name. Say, for instance, we're just going to call it Layer 1, because we're going to be making quite a few layers, and we're going to click off in the background. Okay, so this is Layer 1. And if we click source name and layer name, we can change from our original footage to the new layer name that we've created. Very good to remember what the original footage was. Okay, so let's get into it. Basically, we know that we've got a... If you're working with video footage, you know that sometimes there's somewhere in the video footage that you want to take, and it's just that part of the footage that you want to show. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub through here by holding and clicking and scrubbing through here until we get to the point that maybe I might want to cut out and maybe it's about hmm, wow I get wasted a lot maybe we don't want to show that maybe we want to cut this bit out and maybe have it about here okay so we're gonna go ahead and make sure our layer 1 is selected and basically we want the video footage to start from here. Now there's quite a few ways you can do this. If you just want to, say for instance, you want to show this, just this bit right here, there are ways that you can do it that will save you a lot of time and hassle. We can press B on our keyboard to begin the sequence. And basically this bit here is the crop. If you're used to Photoshop, I'm going to say quite a few words which you'll probably be able to understand what the features do more. We're going to go to the end of the footage, we're going to press N. I don't know what that stands for, maybe END. <laughs> so we're going to use this little control thingy down here. We're going to zoom in. And I'm going to just scoot over here. Now as you can tell, actually I'm going to zoom a little bit, as you can tell everything outside of this lightened area will be cut off. This here is where the video will begin if I was to export it right now and this is where it would end. Now this is an easier way to do it if you're not going to be cutting the video file into many different pieces. Say for instance you just want to render this bit out here. This is the best way to do it. So say for instance I want to render just out this bit here. Okay, We've already set our crop marks here to here okay so we can drag these along or again like I said you can press uh, you can go to a point and press B to begin go to the end and press N <laughs> and that will set the crop point so it begins and it ends hopefully I'm gonna try and put this quite clear so that way you guys don't get lost so say for instance we want to render out just this point right here what with what we would need to do is go to composition and go to add to render queue okay now this will make a new window next to our original composition called render queue 
and this will be different depending on what encoders you have installed if you haven't got many encoders installed I'll try to I don't know maybe you can go on Google and get some encoders xvid or vidx um, download QuickTime player all of those players come with uh, encoders and whatnot and it's really good to use in uh, a third, party, third party software such as this so you should have something similar to this um, and I'm going to give you the best settings for YouTube um, upload and nothing else. If you want to go for maybe a more high production export, then maybe you might want to look a little bit further into that, but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. So if we were to click this drop down button, we've got H.264. Now quite a lot of people haven't had this before, so I'm going to show you how to do that otherwise. But if, we, if you do have H.264, go ahead and click that. And then output to click this and then you can change the name say for instance cops versus robbers robs <laughs> robbers like so and then you could hit render and basically that would create the file and then you could view it and there you go you'd have your file so let's go ahead and just click render and we'll see how long that takes and I'll get back to it when it comes along okay so this is finished uh, exporting and basically once it's done you'll hear a ting and this will go grayed out and basically you can then go ahead and select the footage I've got the video section labeled up here ah cops versus robbers so if we go ahead and click that it's 15.9 megabyte that's pretty good for 41 seconds as you can tell the video footage is just playing along excellent so the video footage is quite grainy it's not high quality the um, original footage that I'm working with isn't of the highest quality just because I don't usually record in high quality I record quite a lot and I don't usually like to use up too much space in my hard drive although I try not to so say for instance we still want to export this at the best quality possible we can go again to composition go to add, add to render queue we're going to go ahead and select this old render. I'm going to press delete to get rid of it. Again, we're going to show you a different way. Um, again, if you've got H2.64, go ahead and click that. If not, we will meet you at that other point. If you don't have H2.64, uh, uh, H2.64, so that's a little bit of a mouthful, uh, selected there, then go ahead and click lossless without selecting anything in the list. And it'll bring up a new output module uh, window. And what we need to do, we need to go ahead and change a few things. It's a little bit more complicated, but we're going to change AVI to QuickTime. Make sure you have QuickTime Player installed, otherwise QuickTime won't be there. And straight away, H.264 is there. If not, go to uh, Format Options, and you're going to want to change the video codec, and you will see it in here that way. Go ahead and click that. And you'll be able to change a few of the settings in here. Now there's a few ways and there's a few different ways that will work this way. Um, and I'm not too sure how to change it but this is the best way to have 100% quality as far as I'm aware doing it this way through a quick time um, and then changing the format. So go ahead and click that and go ahead and click render. Now if you're doing it the other way go ahead and click H264 click H264 again and then you need to go to format options and now we get a different bitrate setting encoder options we've got the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate now what I like to do to keep a low quality I like to make sure that whatever my target bitrate is that I triple the maximum bitrate so what it tries to do it tries to make sure that the lowest quality will always try to be as low as it can and then it will try to whenever it can squeeze some extra juice out it will try to aim for the highest possible you can put these at max if you want but I really don't suggest doing that because if your original footage is only so far like so high on quality there's no point putting it even higher you'll just be wasting time and believe it or not you could have a file which is 200 megabytes and export it wrong and it could come out at 20 gigabytes if you are unlucky enough to do that it is possible and I've got a couple of friends that have done that and it's quite funny so as I said before make sure whatever your target bitrate is just 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 triple it so go ahead and put 9 or something 
click OK, go ahead and change the name again, uh, target, blah, 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 blah. Uh, click save and render, blah, 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 blah. OK, so say for instance we do not want to just render out a certain part of the scene, we want to render out multiple parts. Let's go ahead and just pull this crop part out to the beginning, just drag it all the way out to the end and then just drag out this other half. If you hover over it, it says work end area. So basically it's the work area. Again, I call it crop area, crop margin, whatever you want to call it. So say for instance, we want to just crop out, um, we want to crop out just this bit right here. We want our footage to start here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to composition, uh, no, no, edit and split layer. You can also use the shortcut, but I can't use that since I'm recording with Camtasia and that causes problems. As you can tell, it's created a second layer. Now the first layer ends at where layer two starts. So go ahead and select layer one and press delete on our keyboard. And as you can tell now that the background, do you remember earlier we set the background composition to be red? Now basically where the composite, wherever you see this screen to be red means that there is no footage being played. Now can you tell that when I go before where I've already split the layer that there's nothing being visible. Now this kind of works the same as the crop function that I was using earlier. And we can go ahead and cut out different parts. So let's say for instance I want to stop the footage here. So I'm going to go ahead to make sure that layer 2 is selected. Go to edit. Go to split layer. And there we go, I've made a new layer. And let's say that I want this footage, if I were to separate and drag this uh, layer out a little bit, you can tell that this, this layer two finishes, goes red, and then it continues on with layer three. So anything in between, if basically if this layer here is not highlighted and it's grayed out, it means it's not visible. It's kind of like a mask for Photoshop. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And we can actually extend this mask to be, say for instance, we can start at any point that we want. This footage will always be playing in the background, so basically we're just highlighting it. Okay, it's a little bit confusing, but you'll, you'll get used to it. So say for instance, we want the footage to start at this point right here. We can just drag this mask along to here you can hold shift if you want and it will snap and then basically if we were to scrub past beyond that like before you won't be able to see anything okay now what we can do we can hold shift while dragging these layers and we can just snap it to the previous layer so that way they start one after the other as you can tell and we could again go to the first layer holding shift we can snap to the beginning of the second layer right here and we can press B to begin our work area so we know that it's going to start here, it's going to come along he's going to run along and it's going to just automatically skip to when he's on top of the building he's going to shoot the guy, he's going to run about he's going to shoot this dude over here, he's going to continue on let's say for instance again we want to skip to another part we're going to go ahead, edit, split the layer and we're going to want to go along to maybe another part on this third, uh, this fourth layer. And we want to say, for instance, just just let's go crazy. Let's let's go over here. It's maybe the next kill. So about here. And instead, instead of using split layer to get what we want, because we don't want to make another layer of this, we just want this layer to start over at this point. So what we could do, we could drag the mask over to where we are and hold shift and it would snap and then that's where that layered would, would begin in the footage. Or we can hold alt and press the closing bracket, that's that really sharp pointy bracket, and it will automatically crop the footage to where it is, as you can tell. And then we can drag our layer 4 and holding shift we can again snap that to the original footage. So now we've got three layers of the same footage cropped off at different points in the video, all lining up to create one sequence. And say for instance we want our video footage to end at this point here, we can press N to end it. Or 
we could do it a different way. We could bring our work area all the way to the beginning. We could be really clean about it. We could zoom all the way out and all of this empty space over here is we're not being used. All we're using is just this little bit over here. So why don't we bring it all the way to the beginning? Select all of these three layers and we're going to select the top layer and we can drag all of them at the same time. Holding shift again we can just drag it all the way to snap right at the beginning. Actually I believe it snaps to the layer that you've currently got selected to drag. So if we try to drag the second layer at the bottom and then hold shift it will then snap from that point onwards so we can snap it to the beginning. Let's zoom in using this part down here. So now that the footage, the composition starts at zero and before our footage that we had cropped out from these individual files started at 28 or 25 minutes inwards. So now the composition, the video files start where the composition does. Now the reason to do this means it's tidy. So we can go to where we want to stop the footage, maybe about here. We can select that footage holding alt. We can use hit the closing bracket and we can just crop it off. So now it goes red again. Remember red is just basically empty, empty background noise. So say for instance we want to make sure that the footage ends here. We don't just want to press N for the end and then everything else outside of it can just be ignored. Because that's quite a lot of empty space out here. It's very messy. All we're doing is working with this little area over here. So why don't we try to sort that out. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Now there's one way that doesn't really work for me. Um, if you go to composition and trim comp to work area. Oh it does work this time. Interesting. It doesn't usually always work. Basically it. <laughs> every time I've tried that before it never works. How weird. So you can do that and uh, that will save some time. So say for instance this is the work area that we want to work with. You're dragging it about. Why is it doing that? Grr. There we go. So as I said before, just try to re reiterate. Uh, we want the footage to end there. Holding shift will always snap to interesting points. So we're going to go ahead and hold shift and snap it again to there. And then we just want to get rid of the rest of the empty space. So again, composition, trim to work area. And now this is all that we're working with. Okay. Now say for instance you think that this point here to layer 3 is too too snappy. It's very quick. Maybe you want to transition. So there's a couple of ways, ways of doing this. I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to try and show you the quickest way first and then I'm going to show you the other way. And the quickest way which I'm going to show you is probably the way that I would suggest doing it though it is very messy. I'm going to go ahead and right click create new go to solid and we're going to make the color black click OK make sure the size matches your current work area which is uh, 720p which is 128 1280 uh, by 720 I don't know why I was saying that all weirdly Click OK. As you can tell it's all black. Don't worry it's just because our layer is at top. Now the way that After Effects works is whatever's on top of the layer structure is what is put to the foreground. So whatever's at the top here will be in front of everything else. If we were to move this at the bottom you wouldn't see it because it's behind all of these. So we want the black layer to be at the top so you can just drag and drop that wherever you want in the position. And well would you look at that always. 20 to 30 minutes inwards now. So I'm going to try and do the best I can to speed this up but try to be again quite whatever. So we want to fade in and out. Now with every layer, every layer carries attributes. Clicking this little drop down arrow here we can see transform. Click that and we can see the layer attributes. We have opacity, rotation, scale, position, anchor point. Now anchor point is basically, uh, basically scaled with rotation and anchor point is this point in the center. Uh, I'll give you a good uh, de demonstration of this. If we were to scale down and move the anchor point, that bit in the center, can you see the center point? Everything is being moved with that center point. So if I was to move that center anchor point 
up to the top left hand corner of the rectangle and then I was to rotate it, it would rotate around the anchor point just for anyone that doesn't understand what that is so I'm just going to go ahead and press Control Z and reset everything to how it was but what we really want to focus on is the opacity so as a shortcut key you can press T on your keyboard and it will highlight just the opacity attribute and we can start animating this now there's a couple of ways that you can do this we can go ahead and hit record here and we can start recording our opacity how much is being viewed for the layer so for instance the layer is currently black so when we zoom out it looks like it's kind of fading in and out but just setting it and then moving somewhere else doesn't change it we need to set points uh, where the opacity is going to be most effective so for instance right here where we are now is the current transition point so we know that this is the point where we want it to be completely black so let's go ahead and put our opacity to 100% and click this little stopwatch you should notice now on the timeline that we've got a keyframe that's golden now that's basically saying that at this point on the timeline this gold point is going to represent 100% of opacity if we go to another point over here we don't we want the opacity to start coming in to 100% so this needs to be at 0% for it to fade in so we're going to drag it all the way down and as you can tell it's automatically created another keyframe this again is stating that at this point in the timeline zero opacity will be applied here and through this point to the next point we will automatically animate keep your eye on this bit this point here and as I scale through you can see the opacity is increasing and as such as it continues upwards the screen is going dark and when we want to fade out we get to the opposite point and we just bring the opacity back down again it will create another keyframe as you can tell when we play the whole thing it smooth, smooths, yeah, smoothly transitions one scene into the other quite subtly and nicely now as before we were working if I'm going to hold shift I'm going to snap to this key, first keyframe point um, as you can tell everything outside of these keyframes is unnecessary we don't care if this black keyframe over here can't be seen on the screen but After Effects cares and it will treat it still while it's on the screen and it will use up more rendering power and it will make your scene slower when you're trying to render stuff out so it's always best to try and crop again hold alt and press the closing bracket and as you can tell everything outside of it has been closed off now as you can tell it's a little bit different to our video files our video files show a kind of ghost grayed out um, remains of the video footage because it's kind of it's the with the video footage it's kind of hiding the footage that was there say for instance with layer 3 everything that's highlighted is visible but everything that's grayed out is not visible although it's being played invisibly you can't see on screen and this is the way that we hide it but for a layer a solid layer there's nothing being played when we're cropping so this is why you're not seeing any ghosting or grayed out footage so again we can press alt closing bracket and again this fade in will always be here now what I do like to do is go ahead to this center point here holding shift we can snap to it and making sure we have the layer selected we're going to press the star key and it's going to drop a little marker you can also apply the same um, effect by right clicking going to let's see where is it, it must be on layer layer stars no it's got to be here somewhere because I don't use it this way I always use star but if you don't have one of those keypads I'm going to presume you're going to need where is it it's got to be here somewhere uh, do, do, do. add marker there we go so it's under layer add marker and as you can tell it adds a marker if you've got markers you can go ahead and right click delete this marker or delete all markers now go ahead and press U and it will hide all layers selected uh, all attributes selected say for instance opacity we're going to zoom out on our timeline a little bit and we know that we want to zoom out uh, we want to fade in and out again over here now because of the way that I've done it we can just go ahead and select this layer press ctrl D to duplicate and we can go ahead and drag it over 
I'm going to drag it over to what we can see so far, drag over the timeline visibility so I can see more. And because I've put a marker here, it treats it as a respected in interest point. So I'm going to go ahead and move this red line, our scrub point, hold shift to our transition from the set, uh, layer 3 to layer 4. And with this red line here, this is going to say this is an interest point as well. I'm going to drag our second fade in and out, holding shift, we're going to snap our marker point to our interest point. Oh, it's not doing it usually does okay that's weird I think it's got like a light snap it's a very light snap but okay so now that we know that this is the center point it's just quite easy to know what's lining up it's quite easy to do that especially when you're working quite far out you're not too sure where it zooms in and out but I find that's quite a nice little feature to do the other way of doing it instead of making these these layers right here I'm gonna go ahead and delete this I'm going to zoom back in. Instead of doing that, we could go ahead and just put the opacity, select the layer 3, press T to bring up the opacity attributes. I'm going to start animating at 100%. I'm going to go to the end of layer 3 where the footage ends. I'm going to bring the opacity down. Now, as you can see, we're currently overlapping with layer 4 if we zoom all the way in. It treats it as an X frame. Press back for the previous frame using this preview window is completely red it's a little bit weird so I'm going to just drag this keyframe over here there we go and as you can tell it kind of animates the footage out and it goes red now the reason it goes red is because the background of the composition setting is red if we were to make it black like so click OK you can tell that we kind of get the same effect that we had earlier. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here. Like so. But I feel this puts a little bit more stress on it for some strange reason. And I can see the results right here. Although it's cleaner. So again, click layer 4. Press T to bring up the opacity. Hit the stopwatch to start a recording. But we don't want to start at 100%. We want to start at 0. Put it down to 0 come a couple of seconds in you can judge this eventually and go ahead and put it up actually I'm working in frames I'm going to zoom out a little bit more and just move these points out a little bit further there we go so now when we scrub through you can see that we're getting the same effect zooming in zooming out as compared going to drop these drop boxes so we've got one option which is using the current frames to zoom in and out ah, sorry I'm confusing myself right now we're using two layers here and pressing U with those layers selected we can show the current attributes being animated as you can tell we're using just the layers themselves to animate and it's it's just it's hardly taking up any extra space whereas if we were to use this method here while it might takes up another layer and space we can always duplicate it and it can be very quick and easy to just drag and drop on top of it excellent and then we can just maybe make another one duplicate duplicate it and just drag and drop it it's very easy and quick but it's quite messy um, and eventually you might find yourself with quite a few layers and before you know it you've got so many layers over here it's very hard to work with so I would probably suggest Using either one of these techniques, whatever's best for you. If you're using, if you're working on a small project, probably, you know, maybe go for this. If you're going to be using quite a lot of fade in, fade outs, then maybe this will be the quickest approach: is to create a new layer. Um, but yeah, maybe just keep that in mind. Um, so maybe color correction is something that I might just jump onto now as well while we can. Um, actually, do you know what? I want to fade this scene in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and press D to duplicate our fade in, fade out. I'm going to just go ahead and right there and duplicate it, drag it all the way out over here. Say for instance, that is again very easy. That is how easy it is to just use this layer. So it's very convenient. Um, but yeah, nice little roll there. I have to admit, did enjoy that. Nice little kill back off okay so say for instance we want to add color correction onto this 
Um, there's quite a few ways you can do it. Again, it's pretty much the same way. We can the same way as doing the opacity on the layers and then making a new layer to do the work. Um, we can apply the effect directly to the layer or we can make a new um, adjustment layer which will affect all layers below it. Um, say for instance you can color the skin of someone's face or, some, or someone that's looking at the face can wear colored tinted glasses which affects every color. Um, it's kind of like that. With adjustment layers you're wearing color tinted glasses to look at everything in a different way. Whereas if you want to adjust just a layer, you're only affecting just that certain layer. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean. Layer 2, let's go ahead and go to Effect, go to Color Correction, go to Curves, Color Armor, anything that you want. Let's go for, let's start off really simple. Let's go for Hue and Saturation. Let's say for instance we want black and white. We're going to grab our Master Saturation and turn the slider all the way to negative 100%. As you can tell, I think it's now in black and white. But just for this layer, as you can tell, this layer is highlighted and it finishes at almost 17 seconds. And then when we start the layer two or layer three, it doesn't have the hue and saturation because hue and saturation is only applied to this layer two. We can go ahead and make sure that this is selected right here. Press Control C to copy come over to layer 3 and press control V to copy it but why do that we could have quite a few of these layers to edit and have to pop on new stuff so the best way that you could do it otherwise is maybe create a new adjustment layer we're gonna right click in the composition settings go to new and we're gonna to go to adjustment layer now this is gonna affect all layers below it Okay, and I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. So, say for instance we want to apply that previous effect that we did. Go to Color Correction from Effect tab. Go down to Human Saturation. Change the Master Saturation down to minus 100. So, now you can see that not just this layer 2 is affected, but also after the blackout or fade in, fade out, everything is black and white. Now if I were to move the adjustment layer underneath layer 3, we would see that layer 2 is still being affected by the adjustment layer. But after the blackout, it goes back to color. Moving the adjustment layer above layer 3 will then apply the black and white effect. But again, when it gets to layer 4, it's not affected. So just bear in mind that layer adjustments can um, also stack upon each other. Say for instance, I only want this to be black and white. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. So I'm going to press Control D to make a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and move this up above layer three. And on over here, I'm going to change this hue, uh, hue and saturation to be really oversaturated. Got a lot of artifacts going on. But so now that we know that our layer three is getting affected, but because as you can tell, visibility unlike the the black and white solids or our video files where they're cropped off the adjustment layers aren't cropped off they're running throughout all of the timeline so as you can tell they're starting to overlap now with this it's not really that that much of a big deal because to be completely honest with you they're at 100 percent opacity if I was to start doing different adjustments you'd start to see them stack on top of each other and it's a bit of a problem but yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, as I said before, even though they're stacking, um, they're still on respected layers. So if I were to move them all on top, what would we see first? Even though they're both on top, the top dominant one is going to be the one that overwrites. So if we move the this one down here. Oh, for some strange reason. Oh, of course, yes, hue and saturation. Negative saturation is always going to overwrite colored saturation. So I'm just talking a load of bollocks there. Okay, let's get rid of these anyway. Let's create a new um, adjustment layer at the top. Go to Effect. And we can go to Color Correction and go to Levels. Now this is where I have a lot of fun. And it's where you can start making stuff look more like nighttime or just a nice overall kind of uh, change. 
Now, it's going to take a little bit of uh, intuition and perception and just keen eye to detail and basically your own... Um, uh, what's, the, what's the word? What you, what you think looks good. So I'm going to show you how to edit this little graph here. At the moment, we're going to currently be changing the channels of RGB. That's green, red, green, and blue. Um, so we're going to be changing all of these within one channel. And we can go and change the others at a smaller point. So effectively, you can do your levels, which is basically making the blacks black and the whites whiter. By doing this, you can make kind of like patterns. Now, the best way is to put a couple of points in here. I'm going to go ahead and click once. We've put a point. Click again, put another point. We can go ahead and move these points then and drag them. As you can tell, the scene's getting a little bit darker, a little bit more contrastier. If I were to do this the other way, we'd probably get the opposite effect. Everything becomes lighter. If I were to start moving about crazy, crazy times, we'd start getting some really weird poppins. But try to keep something such as this, a nice little kind of soft S shape would be the best way. Um, again, we're going to go to the blues and we're going to hit a center point. We're going to just drag this right up. As you can tell, we're bringing the blues out. The red itself is staying exactly the same. So if we wanted, we could probably make uh, like a desaturated... Let's see if I can do that. Let's just try and crush all the colors except for the red. I'm not too sure if I've ever done this before, but we'll try it. Okay, bring that down there. I'm going to go ahead to the greens, crush them all the way down. Ah, no, only the reds are what left. Okay, no worries. But as you can tell, change in different parts. Uh, blues, put this back up. So by changing it a little bit, we can. I'm just going to go ahead and start just messing around, just trying to get some kind of different kind of color going on. Just just mess about with it, just have fun with it. And quite a lot of blues in there. Just drag it up. Yeah. Quite a lot more reds going on in there. A little bit more night, kind of warmish. We could turn this FX. Click it to turn on and off, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of a change. Uh, change a little bit more, like so. And alpha doesn't really change that much, as far as I know. I haven't really worked with alpha that much, but yeah. So you can tell it looks different from what it originally was. We, again, we can turn the visibility off down here, and we can see what it originally was like. One thing I do like is if we go to effect with layer two. Uh, the adjustment layer still selected. We can go to effect, go to stylize, go to glow. And as you can tell, we've now got a little highlight on all the lightened areas. Whoops. Like so. Can you see the light bouncing out? Basically, as it says, it puts a glow around certain objects. Anything that's uh, not dark, that is kind of highlighted, is going to be glowed. So I can turn this right up and change the glow radius, bring them out a little bit more, crunch them out. And maybe the glow intensity out a little bit. Now this is going to be ramming out quite a lot of um, rendering time when doing this. So be wary. The more that you have glow, the more it's going to look a bit crazy. It's going to take longer, longer to render out. And we could also go ahead and go to uh, select layer, adjustment layer again. Go to effects. We can go to uh, generate a ramp. And we can create like a vionette kind of like a effect. We're going to drop these down. We can go from a linear ramp to a radial ramp. And then we can start changing the start of the ramp, which we want to be in the middle. And then the end ramp to be outside of the stage, like so. We're going to change the end color to be black and the start of the color to be white. I'm going to actually bring in the end ramp and bring it inwards, like so. Excellent, excellent. And we can change this blend with original. As you can tell, it starts to change a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put it at 80%. Excellent, not bad. Now, it looks a bit too light. Now, with this effect, it usually works if you put it on a different layer. So we're going to go ahead and select ramp, 
press control X to cut that layer. We're going to go ahead and right click, add a new adjustment. I'm going to press control V to paste that layer. Now we've got the ramp at 100%. We're going to change the uh, adjustment, uh, kind of like the blending. We're going to go ahead and click toggle switches and modes. And we're going to get some new kind of like uh, menu selections down here. With layer, the adjustment, uh, the second adjustment layer selected, we're going to change from mode to overlay. As you can tell, we're getting this nice overlay going on. But it's also affecting what's what the uh, second adjustment layer, the first adjustment layer is doing. So we can drag the second adjustment layer underneath the first one as you can tell it changes radically what's going on so if I move it back above it changes now the effects can be somewhat crazy and you can sometimes get some really cool effects going on as you can tell everything's glowing quite nicely I'm going to move the overlay up top and as you can tell different things are getting highlighted now you can mess around with different things and get different effects and I definitely would suggest doing that um, I have to admit, I think that looks really cool. Uh, maybe the glow is maybe a bit too much. So we can turn the uh, glow radius down. Actually, keep the glow radius up. Turn the intensity down a bit. There we go. Maybe the threshold. Like so. Maybe it's still a bit too high. Yeah. Let's turn the opacity. There we go. Just just mess around with the sliders. Try to get something quite cool. There we go. Okay, so I'm somewhat happy with that. It looks somewhat cool and uh, it's it's visually it catches your eye. Um, you look at that and it looks a lot more visually appealing than the original footage, which I'll show you now by deselecting out the footage. So as you can tell, it looks a lot more interesting. And so, for instance, we can now render out this if we wanted to. Um, I'm going to quickly overlay some music to show you what that's like. I'm going to go ahead and go to Project, Import, File, and go to Computer, my Backup, which I have to keep coming into Backup for some strange reason. It's doesn't always work. It's really weird. Stock Resources, Sound. Uh, save tracks, yes I know you can't import that huge track tracks, just go ahead and supersonic maybe, just, I don't know what this is going to sound like but go ahead and we can drag from our project in straight into our composition and as you can tell there's a black line to suggest where it's going to place it in the layer hierarchy so we've placed it at the top and let's say for instance we want to hear what the sound sounds like we can press uh, the on the number keypad you've got a dot that's below number three uh, so you can press that and it will just it'll just sample that audio layer pretty sure we can maybe do the same here we can let's see is it in here I never use these I always use shortcuts so it's kind of frustrating maybe it's over here in preview I have no idea. I do apologize. Anyway, to sample that, you can usually just press Dell to test it. If not, you can use the RAM preview. Clicking this button over here, RAM preview, it will start buffering little green frames above all of the layers. And once it's buffered enough, you'll be able to play it by clicking in any of the blank space around the composition out here. So say, for instance, it's rendered enough you to watch you'll just click and then it will play it in real time for you at the top right corner we can see it's rendering frames 128 of 564 requested go ahead and click here as not really my favorite song I'm gonna go ahead and delay that I want a new frame a new song again I'm not gonna listen to them. I'm just gonna go ahead and just click another random one it's important the selection again just drop it in and say for instance I want it to kick off I want to see where the highest high points are in the music I can press L with the music layer selected and then press it again oh hang on double click it double press L really fast and we can see the wave points down here 
So I can see it's about to kick off over here. So let's move this over here. Let's say this is where I want the music to start. I'm going to press Del or I can click the RAM preview. Okay, yeah, that sounds cool to me. That's fine with me. So I'm going to go ahead and use our previous cutting tool. We're going to go ahead and select where we want it to start. I'm going to go ahead and click about here. I'm going to press Alt, press and hold Alt, and hit the close bracket frame, and we're going to be cutting off. Again, it works exactly the same as it does with the video file. It ghosts the rest of the hidden footage or, or you know, music file. So that's what that is about. Again, like I said before, you can see a little bit more better here that when we drag it, you're revealing the, the music video footage. So let's go ahead and go and highlight the beginning. Hold shift and drag our music file so it snaps to the beginning, like so. And we want to animate the music to come in quietly. We're going to press L once and we can see audio levels. Okay, you can probably see more drop down selections by hitting the drop down box and audio, audio levels, waveform, and such. So, zero decibels is uh, pretty much the neutral zone. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click this recording stopwatch and we're going to set the recording zone to be at minus 48 decibels. So, that's going to be completely quiet, or you could type in yourself minus. 100 decibels if you can still hear some kind of artifacts of it sometimes that does happen um, we're going to go into about uh, 10 seconds and we're going to change it to uh, zero decibels again now this is going to be the max but I don't really want it to be the max uh, like I don't want it to be like sorry it's not the max it's the neutral zone but the neutral zone was quite quite loud you couldn't hear the the background um, stuff that was going on so we want it to be quieter so we want to go back, so going back is minus, so we're going to go minus, and as you can tell the absolute quietest was 48 decibels. So we're going to go back at least 20, we want to go at least half that, so let's go ahead minus 20 decibels. And now as before with the uh, opacity, it will animate the decibels for us. So as you can tell it starts to do such. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a small RAM preview. Go ahead up here, click RAM preview. This tutorial is extremely long, I do apologize, but hopefully I'll be covering enough of the basics for you to understand how to put some video footage stuff together and whatnot, and hopefully it's helpful to someone. Um, but yes, so anyway. It's gonna take a little while, and I might actually pause it until it's buffered enough. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so it's buffered somewhat. Let's just check it out. Clicking in the blank, blank space, uh, blank space, blank space around the uh, video file will then uh, stop the RAM preview, and it will just play what it's already buffered. Okay, so as you can tell, the music kind of kicks in just as I've killed him. Uh, maybe it's not loud enough. Maybe you might want it to be a little bit more, in which case minus 20 decibels is not uh, is too low. So you might want to do minus 10, and then it might be uh, enough. So yeah, pretty much that is how we edit it. And again, like I said earlier, if you want to render it, you can go ahead to Composition, Add to Render Queue. We can then delete the old one. For some strange reason, it had two render versions. Go ahead to hit... 2. H2.6 or go to uh, format quick time then format options and so and so and if you're using this version you want to triple and if you're using the other version you want to go to 100% and click OK uh, oh that's a good point actually I need to point that out uh, audio output here make sure this is checked um, this controls obviously the the quality of the audio and I would not ever skimp on audio because your eyes can be lied to but your ears cannot be lied to your ears can be very accurately judging and it can usually tell when something's off uh, again name it whatever you want GTA online cops and robbers yeah sure I'm not going to change that just easier that way uh, go ahead and render it and we'll see what we got 
and uh, I just want to say thanks for watching this to the end if you got to this point um, hopefully you learned something and hopefully I didn't waste your time hopefully you was able to just just gra grasp the concept of just cutting down footage and being able to put it together just to be able to make stuff if you would like to see more of me expanding upon these um, uh, the, on, on this tutorial uh, maybe showing how to put text into this and whatnot then please let me know um, please write down in the comments please give me a like to support this uh, video tutorial and so I can bring you some more um, helpful advice and so yeah thanks for watching guys and I'll leave you with a video peace Thank you.